Okay, so uh, welcome back. And uh, so, uh, so in the previous part, uh, we, we we were talking about how uh, using by using the method for uh, this quadratic equation, epsilon x square plus two x minus one, where epsilon multiplies the highest degree term x square. Um, by using the method of dominant balance, uh, we find that the appropriate scaling relation is that x scales as one over epsilon, and that will give us uh, the pair of dominant terms, which are these two. So, uh, so just as before, we must we can define a new uh, variable uh, y, let's say, uh, which is of order one, and then uh, cast this equation in terms of the variable y, and then solve it using uh, the regular perturbation methods. So, 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 uh, so uh, let's do that now. Um, so, if you have x going as one over epsilon, then we can define a variable which is of order one, y, which is um, x divided by one over epsilon, which is just x times epsilon. Right? So if x goes as 1 over epsilon, then y scales as 1 because 1 over epsilon times epsilon is 1. So y is a term of order 1. And so let's let's substitute for x in terms of y in this equation and then see what happens. So, uh, so if y is x times epsilon, then x is y divided by epsilon. So let's do that here. Um, so this will give us the equation um, epsilon times y, which is um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, epsilon times y square divided by epsilon square plus 2 times x, which is y divided by epsilon minus 1 equals 0, right? And we can cancel one of the factors of epsilon here. So we have 1 epsilon in the denominator here, 1 epsilon in the denominator here, and epsilon is non-zero. So we can multiply throughout by epsilon to get, uh, get an equation, which is y square plus 2y minus epsilon equals zero. Okay, so note that uh, we, we, we were claiming here that y is a term of order one. So this is order one, this is order one, and now this is much smaller than these two, which is consistent with our method, uh, the, the scaling relation we obtained from the method of dominant balance. So now we can solve this equation uh, by making an ansatz that y epsilon is y naught plus y1 epsilon plus big O epsilon square and substitute it into this equation we'll find uh, again y square is uh, will give us y naught square plus y1 square epsilon square which we can ignore so because we are considering only terms linear order, order in epsilon and not epsilon square and higher so plus 2 y naught y1 epsilon then from here we'll have 2 times y naught plus 2 times y1 epsilon minus epsilon equals 0. Okay, so again, let's collect uh, terms of order epsilon, epsilon to the power of 0. So order epsilon to the power of 0 will give us y0 square plus um, 2 y0 is 0, right? So now this is now now you notice that the order epsilon square uh, order epsilon zero term is still a quadratic equation, which is which is which is, which is what uh, we would expect which is what we would we want, and what we can solve for this. So this will give us two roots. Y naught is zero is one root. Y naught one plus two, and the other root is y naught equals minus two. So we have two of our roots, um, and likewise we can uh, solve for order one order epsilon to the power of 1 using this. Um, maybe we can do it on the other side now. Okay. So, order epsilon to the power of 1 is 2y not y1 y1 uh, plus 2y1 minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so this will give us uh, y1 um, rather 2y1 uh, or let's write it y1 2y0 um, plus 1 equals 1 therefore y1 is 1 divided by 2y0 plus 
sorry there is a 2 here 2y0 plus 2 right okay so uh, so y0 has two values uh, 0 and minus 2 and so therefore we'll have two values so y1 so y1 is when y0 is 0 then y1 is half and when y0 is um, minus 2 then this is minus 4 plus 2 which is minus half so corresponding to y0 equal to 0 we have y1 equals half and then corresponding to y0 equals minus 2 we have y1 equals minus half right okay so uh, so let's write down the full solution full both the roots uh, as a as an expansion in epsilon um, in terms of the variable y and then in terms of the variable x so recall um, um, y is um, here y the, the the substitution we had made was that x times epsilon is y okay so what is the first root y so um, let's write it like this the first root y as an expansion in epsilon is 0 0 plus half epsilon whereas the second root is minus 2 uh, minus half epsilon so these are the two roots up to order epsilon square okay so what are the corresponding uh, x values um, so let's do that here so uh, recall x times epsilon is y so x is y divided by epsilon so the first root x1 as a series in epsilon is y divided by epsilon which will give a half uh, from this term and then uh, this term is still 0 whereas the second root will give us minus 2 divided by epsilon minus half right um, now in this case uh, it would have been better had we solved up to order epsilon square uh, so that we can see what the other roots uh, coming in here are but uh, since we haven't solved it what it what will happen is that this root is actually the one that we had solved last time um, when we had assumed the regular perturbation series and we'll recover that as the first root of this equation however the, the interesting case is the second root of this equation which you can see is of the form minus 2 divided by epsilon minus half and then higher order terms and notice what happens in the limit that epsilon is going to 0. The second root in the limit epsilon going to 0 is actually becoming very very large and in fact if you set epsilon exactly equal to 0 then this one this becomes 1 divided by 0 which doesn't exist which doesn't make sense so there is a very sharp singularity at in the limit that epsilon is going to 0 and and this is the reason why uh, the method that we've just followed or in fact uh, an equation of this form um, is, is is to be classified uh, in a class of problems which are known as singular perturbation problems um, and just to um, sort of bring out the notion of what a singular perturbation problem is vis a vis a regular perturbation solver that we were solving earlier um, the basic sort of idea is that um, if uh, the solution of this equation when epsilon is exactly equal to zero is fundamentally different in character from the solutions of this equation in the neighborhood of epsilon being zero which is in the limit that epsilon is going to zero but is not exactly zero uh, if, if these two solutions are fundamentally different in character such a class of problems is, a, is, 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 is to be classified under singular perturbation problems whereas um, a class of problems where the solution when epsilon is exactly equal to zero um, can be smoothly sort of transitioned into a solution in the neighborhood of epsilon being zero, uh, which is the one that we were considering in the previous examples that we talked about, are known as regular perturbation problems. And another way to sort of remind ourselves that why it's uh, why uh, 
what is a singular perturbation problem we typically what will happen is that the series expansion will have a singularity in the limit that epsilon is going to zero so here for instance we have a singularity minus 2 over epsilon which is singular in the limit that epsilon going to zero um, so so this is really a, a, a very key idea the, the the class of problems that belong to the singular perturbation problems and um, so so um, so let's uh, look at these ideas more and in fact this is what will give us pave our way to the ordinary differential equations where we'll see the form where we see that the boundary layers is actually such a layer uh, which is if you recall the first video which is actually such a layer where there's an abrupt sort of change uh, in, in, in the character of something so um, and so that abrupt change essentially falls into this class of problems singular perturbation problems um, and so um, so so yeah I think uh, um, let, let's continue with uh, more examples and um, See you next time. Thanks.